okay. for finding time and joining mm-hmm. us today mm-hmm. at Nyani Arts. Uh, Mr. Sivam, you've been in this profession, this art, okay. for, for 20 years, mm-hmm. more than 20 years. How has this defined you as a person? Uh, as early as childhood, I mean, I was like, used to you know, spend time after school drawing, sketching, all this, you know. Whenever you hear any uh, artists, they always share this similar experience, you know, uh, exploring. So I noticed I have a flair for realistic drawing. Actually, those days I don't know what is oil painting or acrylic. So it started with just 2B pencil, 4B pencil sketching in your normal drawing paper from school. I always want to spend time exploring different medium. So I did spend time in, you know, uh, after school uh, as an educator. After teaching, sharing my ideas, I do go back home and you know, paint and all the things like acrylic, oil painting. Now I want to take a quantum leap in that area, uh, exploring both digital art as well as traditional art and spend more time. So end of the day is about practice and practice and um, you know, given the time, having more time for yourself. Okay, that's the journey. How has that influenced you back return, in return as a creative person? Uh, whenever I teach students, I don't just talk about the process of skills, you know, the process of how you mix the colors, or you know, but also the the concept behind it, the thinking process. For example, I just give one specific example. Eh? Is um, you know how you actually explore uh, certain technique. For example, um, they call it creative and in- inventive thinking skills. It means uh, given a particular shape and form, how you actually metamorph. Uh, morph the thing or how you merge the image or how can you apply some of the concepts uh, like for example uh, you know uh, fragmentation fragment the images what is the impact uh, how you actually uh, further make the changes explore so these are the things uh, which actually is part of the critical thinking process why uh, you like ask very important question like what do you see how do you further expand this idea what are the, how you do, after expanding, how do you interpret that? Can you see these are the so-called guiding questions which is taught in the pedagogical level, uh, which is not many artists understand that. They know the process, but for a common person, as an educator, you need to bring that. So in the education field, you are asking certain specific questions. That is where the educator comes in and able to explain the process done by the artist so that's where, you know, in fact, I talked to Nyana whether we can do some sort of collaboration um, talking to the artists. Because when artists do, they demonstrate, they talk about purely the skill, but that artistic concept of, you know, number one is pedagogical uh, processes, uh, the relevant questions you're going to ask, and uh, of course, the, the how, end of the day, that, that conceptual or uh, creativity element of the individual, you know, uh, able to further that interpret, expand that, uh, uh, you know. But how you do that, of course, there are certain questions you need to ask them. Are they mostly uh, related to nature or is it just that you're inspired from it and that's the flow I, I, that you... Both ways, I think, both ways, both ways, yeah. Yeah, my subject matters nature and I also get inspiration from them as well. Right. Uh, yeah. And because uh, it gives you the freedom, because you, you, in nature, it allows you to experiment, you know, make some mistakes as well. So, and, you know, and that gives you the uh, more leverage for creativity and further exploration, you see. Uh, many objects, you tend to, oh, this is a dimension, this has to be... But of course, when it comes to human faces, it's a bit different. Uh, when you draw a human face and animal face, uh, animal face is a bit more forgiving because people were not really... Like, human face is a bit different because they, uh, every single day you're meeting people, they, uh, be, let's say your eye is not aligned properly. So mostly uh, realistic and hyperrealism. Uh, Abstract, I haven't really done abstract, mostly most of my work, if you look at my website, it's all uh, realism. Um, it's, uh, I think it's partly because of my background. I haven't really gone into abstract yet. So even uh, when I do digital, it's realism. I am learning a motion, uh, motion design as well. Motion design means, uh, you know, graphics but motion form uh, as, as a part of our creativity as well. Like five seconds, ten seconds, even with simple characters, you know. like how you create an interesting character using that. As an art educator, mm-hmm. as an artist, mm-hmm. um, what could you say that has been missing 
that needs to be incorporated into this community or as an educational cycle. What is actually missing right now is that the, the creative element. Uh, people tend to be always go on caution, you know, and on caution uh, rather than you know going all out. So that is what is actually missing. So they kind of uh, they able to try, able to um, you know uh, look forward to something new maybe try uh, exploring new frontiers so these are some of the things that uh, the uh, the world needs like in terms of uh, artists can share that like in the, the real world artists should come out and share the creative element in them like, not just simply as a creation of a work but in terms of the thinking process and how they can help the world to uh, to make things a bit more uh, forgivable You've been associated with Mr. Niana yeah. for so many years. Yeah. Right? Um, you know, and, and Niani Arts has been accepted since 2001. Yeah, yeah. Um, please share with us how you see Niani Arts supporting and being a part of this art community. You know. So we do share something similar, similar interests. You know, some of your ideas all uh, we're able to sing. Sometimes there are some differences as well. But generally, as a personal level, I see a lot of sinking, you know. Uh, and, uh, of course, as a gallery, they're really supportive, uh, how they're able to, you know, encourage artists in the, in the chat group and, uh, you know, uh, through their links, strong links with the collectors and so on. So, so they're always encouraging artists to share, you know, uh, through the RC platform, through the online platform, through the exhibitions. So they're already constantly, uh, through the uh, effort, linking out with the artists. The Singapore Indian artists as well, or even OCs as well, or uh, Malaysian artists, they have a quite strong connection. So they're really supportive. Um, and uh, of course, the, the of course, there's always more room for improvement because in terms of resources. Nyani Arts actually, they have an ideal environment and they can use Singapore as a base to expand even further, going beyond India, Malaysia, or Singapore and go um, all out. Uh, I think they're really doing well with collaborating with some of the local artists, you know, uh, um, artists from different backgrounds, ethnic group, which is good, you know, from Australia. So I believe that, I always tell my student, at the end of the day, share your ideas. Uh, we need to be a critic, you know, don't, don't be so um, uh, apprehensive or too, too scared. For example, let's say a student, a very good example, when the student draw something and they like to hide when I'm a pass by because they're afraid that they share the work. It's okay, we, you, you are a student, this is an education institution, we're here to learn from each other. Mm -hmm.